You're listening to the WBT Podcast with Michael Lodge. Listen to all of our podcasts at www.wbtpod.com. Stay informed. Let's get started. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. And welcome to the WBT. This is Michael Lodge. So glad that you've joined me. You know what? Politics... It's stupid. It really is stupid. I don't know if you watched the uh, opening ceremonies of the Supreme Court nominee's interview before Congress. But there were so many delays that the Democrats made by using the argument that they haven't seen all the documents. Every individual on that, every Democratic senator on that panel, on that committee have already come out and said they will not support this nominee. So they made themselves look so stupid because why do you want to get more documents if you just want to use it to find something, any little tidbit of this nominee while he worked at the White House, which has privilege, information data privilege, Client privilege. Attorney-client privilege. But yet they want to see it because they want to dig. They want to be able to add spice to this nominee's questioning. Instead of looking at the 300 so cases that he has given an opinion on, they're not reading it. So if they're not going to read any of those 300, what makes you think that they're going to do anything smart? So you have a bunch of senators who have already said that they're not going to vote for this nominee, even though he's a good judge, he's a fair judge, he he has a command of the Constitution, he has a command of the way that a judge should look at the law, and not politics. <clears throat> the problem is, is that the Democrats want to look at every case that goes before the Supreme Court as a political challenge. They have no arguments of law, but they have arguments of politics. And when you have a political agenda, you become a dangerous person to this United States. They have no desire to do anything that will benefit the American people, but only to benefit their power base. So when you come into a meeting several weeks ago saying when this judge was nominated, and to say, and to say that they're not going to support this nominee, No matter what document that they look at, the result is still the same, that they're not going to do anything for this nominee. So we have the politics of stupid. And the politics of stupid is being seen by the American people every single day as we listen, as we watch, as we observe how politicians behave and how they drive the momentum of more stupidity by allowing demonstrators into the room, yelling at the top of their voice that no one can understand. That's the politics of stupid. We've got to get away from this situation. We have senators and congressmen talking about impeachment. <clears throat> there's no way that this president is going to be impeached. He has broken no laws. In fact, they can't even 
come up with it. The only law that they can come up with that they think might have happened was interfering with law. Remember, collusion is not collusion is not illegal, but it is a political attack. And we get back to the same situation of stupid politics. We have individuals who are politically stupid who will say and do anything to attack the president of the United States. And it goes on and on and on. It goes day after day, night after night, television program after television program, radio show after radio show. And I am sorry, but as an American, I'm getting fed up with it all. I'm getting fed up with the stupidity of attack, the stupidity of impeachment, the stupidity to grandstand, the stupidity to not do anything that benefits you and I as Americans, as taxpayers. We cannot allow this to happen any longer. There are so many people in Washington, D.C. who have got into a habit of being politically stupid. You look at Adam Schiff, as soon as something ever comes out negative in the press about the president, he's out there spreading it out, adding on to it, attaching his own version. But that's how Adam Schiff works. He is part of the problem of Washington, D.C., and he is one of the politically stupid. Elizabeth Warren is out there attacking corporations and businesses and wanting to add this law and that law and wanting to make it a law that the President of the United States has to show up his tax return have become the politically stupid. Now, I'm going to explain something to you as a tax guy. <clears throat> no matter how long that you take in looking at President Trump's tax returns, if you ever were to show it, you would not even know what you're looking at. And you will never get the full information that you think you should be getting. Donald Trump has run corporations. And those corporations, profit and losses, are never going to show up on his personal tax return. That is just how it works. C corporations have a life of their own and they sit out there. And there's no way that you can tell a president, show us your C corporation. It's a life by its own. It has its own board of directors. It has its own shareholders. It has its own investors. The only thing that you'll ever see is S corps and LLCs flowing in or passing through, which is the tech the correct technical term, but you're never going to see the full income statement of that S-Corp or LLC or partnership. You'll never see it. You'll see what his percentage is of the net income or loss. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been working outside all day. And we have all these things falling into the air that is causing me to get this stuff into my chest. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. But to get back to the tax return. The tax returns of the president is not going to show you his net worth. Never will. It will never show you the, 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 the stock that he owns. Because dividends might not have been paid out, so you'll never see it. If stock ownership is not reported on the tax or personal tax return unless there is a dividend paid out. So for you to ask Donald Trump to look at his tax return, it's not going to show you hardly anything. 
and all these other individuals who have s- submitted their tax returns is not showing you the behind the scene other businesses that they are involved in that never get reported on their tax returns. How would you like it, basically, if you went for a job interview and your, jo- and your employer said, hey, I need to see your last six years tax returns. I need to see it. Would you give it up or would you, th- would you say, this guy is loony? <clears throat> tax returns are confidential financial information. That should never be seen by anybody out there in the public because what they will do, especially with Trump's tax returns, is that they will take numbers and misconstrue it. He has many non-public companies that he is involved in that you will never see any type of financial data from that corporation. Politically stupid again. Those demanding to see the politics, I mean, sorry, those demanding to see the tax returns are politically stupid. Because they're trying to stir the pot, even though they know that they're not going to see the total net worth of Donald Trump. Politically stupid is becoming very annoying to the American people. I want to remind you what happened in the last election. They saw all the criminality, they saw the the unethical part of the Democratic Party last time. And they saw all these things happening, and the silent majority sat there, and they watched, they listened. And they voted. And we had a new president. This is probably one of the worst time in history that Americans decided to say, okay, we need to clean up Washington, D.C. And so they hired someone to do it. They hired Donald Trump to go in and do it. He became the hatchet man. And he went in, and he said that he was going to clean up, and he has tried his damnedest to do what he said he was going to do. But yet you have stupid politics and politically stupid politicians who sit there and continually, day after day, throw stones at our government. And now we have the threat of socialism. Socialism, who has ne- which has never worked in any country and has most of the time brought the country down to where the people cannot even survive any longer. Socialism that takes the control away from Americans to make their own decisions. Socialism that says government is better to control your lives than you are. Socialism that takes your hard-earned tax dollars that you work for and you send into the government and they say, okay, free stuff for everybody. We're going to give free stuff. We're going to give... Everyone gets Medicare. Everyone gets whatever it is. That's socialism. If you look at, I was in Denmark two years ago, and it was election time. The biggest problem and the biggest debate was, how do we curb our costs when we have so many people coming into our country who want free stuff? It was a big debate. It was on on the television every single night. They shut down palaces to hold these extravagant television Debates. 
when you have people not participating and not contributing to the programs, you have a problem. I was talking to a, a taxi driver, and he was we were talking about what kind of car I had. And he was driving a Mercedes-Benz as his taxi. And we got to talking, and he says, you know, the tax on this is 150%. For me to have this car, I have to pay a tax of 150%. And I have to work day and night to be able to pay for the cost of this car. Talked to another taxi driver in Italy, and I said, "How are the, how is everything going in Italy?" He says, "We want a revolution, and they want a revolution because everything had been taken from their paychecks." He said, "We used to be able to be able to go out, and we used to be able to have a dinner with our family. We used to be able to go see a movie. We used to go to a nightclub. Now, when we go out, we can only afford." One dinner that we split between two people. He says, I want a revolution. We cannot live this way any longer. The taxes are just way too high. If you take a very close look at countries who have become socialists, are failing because the economics are hitting the individuals and the citizens that live within those countries. Socialism hurts individuals financially. And if you start saying, well, everybody has to pay their fair share, there is no such thing as fair share. Nothing has been, has not been, has never even worked this fair share crap. The only people it works for are politically stupid. They have no argument to support their way of thinking except that they want everybody to understand you're going to get free stuff. But it comes with a cost. But they're not going to tell you about that. They're not going to tell you that if you're going to pay 25% tax rate, whatever it is at the moment, If you're going to pay 25% tax rate, it's going to go up to 60% because we need your tax dollars to give away free stuff. That's socialism. Politically stupid politicians out there are wasting our time and they're wasting our tax dollars because they are no longer working for the American people. They're working to get reelected. They are working to gain power and they're looking to get more money from all their speeches and books and everything else. But yet they will say everybody has to pay their fair share. That's not America. Americans get out and we work. The only way that we can get what we need in life is by working hard. Under socialism, you don't get that option. Under socialism, they want everybody to have the same pay rate. They want everybody to have the same amount of vacation. They want everybody to have, and the the list goes on and on. Because the government thinks they know you better than you do. They do not want to see you succeed in your profession. Because they want control over you. So we as Americans have got to limit our time viewing these politically stupid people on television. We've got to stop this. We've got to limit their powers. And we do that by having term limits on these politicians in Washington, D.C. Feinstein has been there way too long. Adam Schiff has been there way too long. Elizabeth Warren has been there way too long. And there are Republicans also that have been there way too long. 
They have made it a lifetime career. And when you have a lifetime career of politics, you tend to forget about what you're there for. Because you're always constantly looking to the next election, saying the right things so that your people will vote for you, but never doing the right thing that benefits America. So we've got to put a stop to this politically stupid nation of ours because it's gone on way too long. Impeachment, politically stupid. Higher taxes, political stupid. Welfare for all, all, politically stupid. Socialism, really politically stupid. Uh, People come to this nation because they've heard. They've heard this great story of how they can do anything in this nation. And they come here. And they create successful businesses only to be faced with more and more red tape from government, from the local level, from the county level, to the state level, to the federal level. We as Americans have let this happen to our states. I mean, I can't believe that in the state of California, that they have, are now allowing, in San Francisco, they're allowing illegals who have their children in public schools, tax-paying public schools, to now vote in their school districts. It doesn't make sense. It's politically stupid. And now you've got Gavin Newsom running for governor there, who wants to give illegal aliens free health care. And yet we, in the state of California, they have the highest rate of homeless, but they have no plans for them. It's all about the illegal alien. If you go down the streets of, of Los Angeles and San Francisco and some of the outlining communities of these cities, you see people living in tents after street after street after street as you drive down, you will see mentally ill people having problems on the streets. But yet, California does nothing about it. They have the highest rate of unemployment. They have the highest rate of individuals hooked on drugs. And yet they do nothing. They offer no hope for those people who are living on the streets. Did you realize that there was a study that was done and they said there are over 700,000 homeless children living on the streets of our nation. And yet we do nothing. Thank goodness for charitable organizations who reach out and help these young kids. If we didn't have them, many people would be going hungry every single night. And there are people going hungry in our nation and that should never be. But if you talk about these senators, where are their politically stupid ideals at? At the border. For less than 2,000 children who have not been returned to their families. And most of them is, is because there are no families to, retu- to return them to. They sent their children across the border. So, but on a good note. Even though we have these politically stupid politicians, we have some very good common sense Americans 
who see what is going on and they know that they have the ability to make a change in November when everyone goes to the polls to vote. They know, I know, you know, that when we go to cast our vote, we're going to do what is right and not what is in a political agenda. We have had so many political agendas in the last few years that have done such great harm to our nation, that have divided our nation, that have racially charged our nation. We are Americans. And we've got to start acting like Americans and take back this nation from the politically stupid. If you have any questions, send me an email at mlodge at lodge-co.com. If you have any comments to me, send them to me. I'm more than willing to, to talk to you about it. So tomorrow, or today I should say, let's use the American good old common sense and make good old decisions that will benefit our nation and not divide it. Talk with you very, very soon. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518. Or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. World of Business and Taxes.